Our body is always at risk of infections by variable types of microbes such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Producing antibody is one of the major immune mechanisms protecting us from these infections. The produced antibodies bind to the surface of the microbes and inhibit their infection to our own cells and the growth of microbes. Mm -hmm. However, antibody can be also generated against our own body, like internal organs such as kidneys, liver, and eyes. This causes the inflammation and damage of the targeted organs. This is the cause of autoimmune diseases. Therefore, it is very important to understand how antibody responses are regulated in our body. Antibodies are produced by a specific type of immune cells called plasma cells. Plasma cells are derived from a type of lymphocyte called B cells. B cells do not spontaneously become plasma cells and they need help from other immune cells. One of the most important cells that provide help to B cells is another type of lymphocyte, helper T cells, that express a marker of CD4. The type of helper T cells associated with antibody responses was not clear for decades. Recently, one subset of helper T cells, T follicular helper cells, TF8 cells, has been established as a major helper for antibody responses. My lab has been working on the determination of the basic biology of the TF8 cells in humans and their implications in human diseases. Because TF8 cells are the major driver of the antibody responses, the quality and the magnitude of the TF8 responses is directly associated with many aspects of antibody responses. Too little or too much TF8 responses cause problems. For example, too little TFA responses can cause failure to respond to vaccinations. This year, we reported that activation of TFA cells is important to induce protective antibody responses in influenza vaccines. On the contrary, too much TFA responses can lead to the generation of the antibodies targeting our own body and thus cause autoimmune diseases. Therefore, TFA responses need regulations. By understanding how TF8 responses are regulated in humans, we'll be able to generate novel improved in vaccine designs and novel therapeutic approaches for autoimmune diseases. Today, I want to talk about what we have discovered on human TF8 cells and how our discoveries leads to the development of novel therapeutic approaches for human autoimmune diseases. TFA cells are derived from a naive helper T cells that have not interacted with other immune cells. First, we have identified one type of immune cells, dendritic cells localized in the skin, that can induce naive cells to become TFA cells in humans. Second, we found a molecule produced by dendritic cells that is interleukin-12, which is responsible for the generation of human TFA cells. Third, we found that human TF8 cells are composed of heterogeneous cell populations that differ in their markers and functions. The TF8 cells contain at least three different types of cells, and two of them are very efficient helpers for B cells, but one population is much less efficient than the others. We found that maintaining the balance between helpers and non-helpers within TF8 cells is very important. In a pediatric autoimmune disease, juvenile dermatomyositis that affects skin and muscles, there was an increase of helper type of TF8 cells and a decrease of no helpers. Such imbalance correlated with the disease activity in these children. This suggests that imbalance between helpers and no helpers of TF8 cells causes autoimmune diseases. One strategy is such as in the case of juvenile dermatomyositis to increase the number of non-helper type of TF8 cells to normalize the balance between helpers and non-helpers. Another strategy is to inhibit the generation of the function of the helper type TF8 cells. Interleukin-12 can be a good target for this strategy. The other strategy is to normalize the functions of uh, dysregulated non-helpers. Our recent studies suggest that non-helpers become helpers 
in some autoimmune diseases. Normalizing the functions of no helpers may decrease the activity of TF responses in body and thus relieve the clinical symptoms of diseases. Still, much remains unknown regarding the biology of human TFA cells, including the molecular mechanisms for human TFA cell development and for their functional regulations. The type of TFA cells associated with autoimmune diseases might differ from one to another. Therefore, studies on both basic science on human TFA cells and clinical studies using samples from patients are fundamental to develop novel therapeutic targets.